Hey there, so with Star Trek Discovery off to its second season, I thought that I would go back and review an article that talked about an interesting theme that you can't quite talk about the same way anymore. You know, this, it's become the bastion of uh, division when you discuss this. In fact, I will look at comments on videos or comments on articles that talk about this theme. The Orville versus Star Trek Discovery. And it's not about shows anymore. Nope, it's about the people involved. And well, if you don't like one, you know, Star Trek Discovery, well, there's a lot of qualifiers that are added. Now, if you think that that is not a representation of reality, well, I offer you a video that I uh, covered before that talks about an article out there involving the showrunners and the stars. They bring up race constantly. They bring up voting constantly. And they bring up the fact that people who don't like this stuff, well, you're apparently trolls. And you're giving backlash because of gender, because of race, because of sexual identity, and because you voted wrong. In fact, I've been reading articles these days that say that if you are a Trump voter, you can't even like this kind of stuff because you don't understand understand Star Trek. Now, I found that to be quite amazing, and I'm not talking about my politics within that. If you think that this is a Trump voter talking about it, you miss the point there. It's talking about division of fandom, and the division isn't over opinion, necessarily, or liking or disliking an approach. No, they're adding inference and saying, you don't like because. Now, that already impacts the way I view something, but also on the other other side of that, it impacts how critics see it, how media sees it, and on. So the discussion you're looking at here, well, this discussion, again, as we've moved forward, has taken a really, really different approach. But here, I wanted to review back, because this is going to cover a few episodes, and it's going to look at IMDb scores. Now, they also bring up Rotten Tomatoes scores there, and they talk about the Orville's awful scores versus the great great scores for Star Trek Discovery. Now, I thought that was very telling, considering they're talking about what do fans like best. Only fans weren't giving the scores that they considered for Rotten Tomatoes. See, they go in. They talk about this. They give you a little bit of a lead-in. And then they consider the 18% versus the 83%. Only this, again, it wasn't given by the fan portion. No on Rotten Tomatoes. That was actually given by critics. Critics had gone out. They had looked at the show. And when they looked at the show, yeah, they found quite a bit of favor in what was being thrown out there. And if you read what they're saying, certify something fresh, it is beyond absurd. Not taking in the storylines oftentimes, or even when they do, they don't take into account that this kind of stuff has brought back all of the problems that we had supposedly leapt past when we were going into Star Trek. No, they just looked at it as campy old sci-fi versus gritty militaristic action. I mean, I actually read that too. But anyhow. Let's look at this. So let's check out exactly what we see if you're scoring one versus the other and seeing who won within this article. So episode one's Old Wounds versus the Vulcan Hello. Now here they give a little bit about it. Opening episodes they can be tricky. You got a bunch of inter uh, to introduce a, a bunch of new fresh faces and settings, as well as establish a situation and create a, a compelling story that makes the best of all things. Orville opener it takes a certain tone they mention here, but it's a lot less jokes there. Meanwhile they say Discovery felt more like Game of Thrones or a Westworld, huh? You know, it didn't sound like a Star Trek. Very interesting. IMDb users, they basically had at that time, again, these things changed. There was a point one differential, but still, Orville won out. Episode 2. Command Performance versus Battle at the Binary Stars. Command Performance finds uh, Captain Ed and First Officer Kelly, prisoners in a replica of their former world. In Battle of the Binary Stars, uh, Burnham joins uh, her captain in a daring plan to end a battle with the Klingons that threatening to turn into war. Ugh, gross. I hate those Klingons. Orville it comes out on top of with a 7.9 versus battle coming in at a 7.6. So you have a two 
Uh oh. Episode three about a girl or context is for kings. On the third episode, Orville went for a, so a socially relevant tale about ethical quandary two parents face when deciding whether or not to reassign the gender of their baby. Meanwhile, over at Discovery, got that, uh, this on a new ship, um, the USS Discovery with a new captain, the mysterious da -da -da. the uh, ranking there seven point nine versus a seven. 7.9. So we have a draw. And remember that because that point is actually going to be something that, well, Discovery definitely needs in its favor. Episode 4 If the Stars Should Appear versus The Butcher's Knife Cares Not for the Lamb's Cry. Two long titles for relatively simple episodes. In the Orville, the crew encounter a ship that's about to crash into a star. Discovery, it's um, settling basically into the new role here. Now, on uh, IMDb, Orville gets over a point differential there, with the audience preferring the Orville's take on old school sci-fi. That's a 4-1, in case you lost count. Episode 5 here. Now, during episode 5, Ed falls in love with a mysterious alien. Over on Discovery, a captain is captured by Klingons, joining prisoners of, the, of war Starfleet Lieutenant and notorious criminal Harry Mudd in uh, custody. Orville gets an 8.2, Discovery 7.6, disappointing for an episode that brings back classic character Mudd, 5 to 1. You know, that disappointment, it will transpire more and more when you're talking about bringing back classic characters, Pike, if you're really getting down to this show. Episode 6. Looking at that episode 6. The Orville involves our heroes going on an undercover mission to infiltrate the Krill ship and steal a copy of their Bible. In Discovery, the crew are intrigued by a new crew member, Tyler, who's probably a Klingon. Another trouncing. 8.3 to 7.5. Six point six to one here. Episode seven: Majority rules versus magic to make the sanest man go mad. Okay, so if you've already seen the Black Mirror episode Nosedive, you'll feel you've already watched this Orville episode, mainly because it's got a very similar premise about a society that is allowed to vote on everything and it satirizes social media storms. If you haven't seen it, uh, it's decent enough, they say. Meanwhile. The uh, Discovery also looks to another episode of a different series, but at least this one's in the same franchise. So, hey, you know, there may be their copying, but hey, at least it's Star Trek, right? And its take on the next generation cause and effect was popular with fans. Still, was enough to beat out the Orville, 8.4 to 7.5. So, if we're going through that, we only got some of the episodes, again, remembering there, 7 to 1. Now, of course, you can't say that the two shows are sharing audience. In fact, that would be far from the course there. I mean, the, uh, the Orville, interestingly enough, I think has more of a mainstream appeal. And it also appeals to people that actually liked old school sci-fi. Star Trek Discovery, well, it seems to throw all of those things out the window. And also, it requires you to step behind a paywall while doing so. That's one of the things that really bothers me, too. All of this thrown out the window when you could have a show bet on that name that actually does something, a lot of justice. Look at the pricing point that this show comes in at. Think about what could have been delivered there. I mean, really, should we be talking about the Oroville maybe being better than that show that cost an estimated, what, $20 million? I mean, man, that is something really there. You know, when I'm talking about this, too, I want to make this very clear. If you like Star Trek Discovery, hey, more power to you. I should be able to dislike what I dislike as much as you should be able to like what you like. And again, if you don't think the showrunners meant to go out and to make certain themes divisive, well, go and look up their own words. This is a conspiracy theory. They have given interviews to say that. That's why we can't even have this discussion now without that kind of stuff being more and more 
and more divisive. But anyhow, you tell me what you think. Is this actually a better show than the other? Are they actually comparable? What do you see in the parallels and the contrast and on? Also, if you like this kind of content, you probably know the drill by now. Sub like, bell, kung fu, whatever else you want to do there. Leave comments. I want to know what you think. Also, if you want to go beyond that, there are links within the description. I don't want to burn a lot of time here, but I really want to thank you for showing up. I appreciate everything you folks do. You make this stuff fun, and going through it, it should be a lot more fun sometimes, but, you know, there are crazies in the media, or crazies in every hobby, every fandom, and on these days, and current year, yeah, it's gotten really, really ugly. So I appreciate what all of you add out there. Leave me your comments. And again, thank you for being here.